questions? Any questions? Okay, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Steve. That moves us on to unfinished business. Um, are we going to have the audit presentation? Uh, no, we will not. Uh, we had some limited communication with our auditor, and he has not requested any further documentation, but we have not received any reports as of this time. Bill 2024-25, an ordinance authorizing an agreement between the City of Cameron, Missouri and the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission for State Block Grant Project 23-013A-1, providing for airport improvements at the Cameron Memorial Airport. I will undertake a motion to pass Bill 2024-25 on a second and final reading by roll call. Discussion? Show Gina Reed Hibbler. Yes. John Barker. Yes. Karen Hamlet. Yes. John Figer. Yes. Becky Curtis. Yes. That moves us on to our second and final reading by roll call for uh, on Bill 2024-26. Shelly. Bill 2024-26. An ordinance for the City of Cameron, Missouri, authorizing a conditional use permit for Joshua Shaw, Brandless LLC, to operate a storage warehouse in a CN neighborhood commercial district at 1005 West 3rd Street. I will entertain a motion to pass Bill 2024-26 on a second and final reading by roll call. So moved. Discussion? Shelley. John Breckman. Yes. Karen Hamlin. Yes. John Feiger. Yes. Becky Curtis. Yes. Gina Reed Nibbler. Yes. That moves us on to new business, volunteer annexation, Packer Clayton. We did, we did receive um, annexation requests. We requested the parties that owned um, the roadway to fill out a voluntary annexation request. They both did. This is for the roadway that matches up to the property owned by TA Truck Stop. So it's just the roadway. Um, the next step is for council to send it to planning and zoning for to review. So I just need a motion second and a vote to send it to planning and zoning. Um, once they uh, approve it, it will come back to council for a public hearing and then we'll go from there. So this road belongs to them. Is that what I'm understanding? Is it being in this? Yeah, it's it's the it's the roadway in front of their properties, and we're just annexing the roadway, not the property. No, I knew that, yeah. but I yeah. just didn't know we were. I never known the road the road before, so I'm just yeah. Yeah, the yeah there should be a map in there that was that was there is. Yeah. There is. Yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Right. So there's no cost. This is just the road. Yeah, it's just the road. It, as it, as it sits right now, half of the roadway is annexed and half of the roadway is not. So, so this is not a resolution. This is what? This is just it's just a, a motion, second and a vote to All send right. it to send it to planning and zoning. So I will want to take a motion to send this to planning and zoning. So All right. Second. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Five in favor, zero opposed. Thank you very much. All right, that takes us to our first reading today, Bill 2024-27, shall we? Bill 2024-27, an ordinance for the City of Cameron, Missouri, authorizing a change in zoning district classification for property owned by Christopher and Tanya Graham for an agricultural district to R1 single-family district. I will entertain a mo uh, motion to, to pass on uh, first reading, Bill 2024-27. Discussion. Okay, we'll ask uh, Michael to talk about that for us, our building inspector. All right, that was a property out on a highway that was uh, voluntarily annexed 
in the city limits. And uh, this is just to take from an agricultural district to an R1 single family. <coughs> um, there were some issues that we were that were brought to our attention with the uh, septic on the property. Uh, right now, with it being, well, before it was annexed, I guess, we couldn't do anything about it. Now that it's being annexed into the city limits, now we can handle that and hopefully get that under control. That's uh, really all I have on that. What do you mean under control? Um, well, we, we can make them fix their issues, basically, I guess, is, is, is what I'm saying. Uh, because we have rules against having septic and especially leaching out of the property if that's the case. So, so they're going to have to tap into our city or do we tap into them? They'll have to tap into the, to our properties. Yeah. Any other questions? Is there any, any reason why they didn't do that all at once when they annexed it or do, is it just a process? You annex it first and then you change uh, it? Uh, as far as the the district being changed? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, it's just a separate thing. Okay. I, th I think every time we annex something, does it automatically come in as agricultural? So every time something is annexed into the city, it comes in with whatever Clinton County or DeKalb or Caldwell has its own as, as most of the council members are aware, most of the property surrounding Cameron that would be annexed in uh, is agricultural. Um, at some points, some cities will do rezonings and annexations at the exact same time. However, it's my position that that is not valid because you don't technically have a legal, any legal authority to zone or hold a public hearing in front of the planning commission until the property is within the corporate city limits. So that is, this is the process that said the city follows where it's annexed and then subsequently after a recommendation is made by the planning commission when it is through the annexation process, but then once it is fully annexed, we do go back and rezone it out from typically add to residential or commercial. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? I uh, just one. So, um, were they aware of the, the septic, but the, the fact that there was going to be a cost of them in the future was the cost of this district? Um, my understanding, of, I don't know if that answer for sure. My understanding is the neighbors were aware because they came in and let us know about it. And we increased our all. Yeah. So yeah, and we, again, we, we don't have the evidence of that, so we can't we can't say whether it's true or false. So at this point, until somebody makes a complaint and says, "Hey, look, there's," and we can see visual evidence, then sure. So it's kind of around that. And yeah, maybe that's why they annexed it. I mean, this might be a cheaper solution than doing another subject. Right. I don't know. I think we're in the we're in our side. Any other questions? All right, thank you. All those in favor of passing Bill 2024-27 on our first reading, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes, five in favor, zero opposed. That moves us to our resolution today. Resolution 2024-21, Shelley. Resolution 2024-21. A resolution authorizing the city manager to accept a proposal from Snyder and Associates to complete a demolition plan with shared wall considerations for 112 East 3rd Street. I will entertain a motion to pass uh, resolution 2024 21. So moved. Second. Discussion. Okay, I'm going to start out a little bit then and ask Michael to come up and help me out a little on that. This is the uh, the uh, building that is uh, across the alley from us that has been falling down for the last year or so. We have a court order to uh, have the building uh, designed for repair or to be uh, demolished within a certain period of time. The owner uh, did not do that and uh, did not uh, follow through and did not come back to us and tell us what to do. So we're going to have to follow through with the uh, demolition. In order to do that, we need to get a demolition plan and that is what this, uh, this starts that process through. Um, and the, the problem is, it, it, it's why do we have to do that? Why is it our responsibility to do that? Well, the answer is because it's a public safety issue, and you've got a building where they fall down on our main street, and somebody doesn't do it, uh, and run that risk of doing it, so it falls upon us to do it. It's a tragedy that we have to do that, but we're the ones that are stuck with it. Uh, 
Michael, you want to talk a little about what Schneider's doing then? Um, yeah, like you said, it's just a plan to bring the building down safely and to waterproof the what will be the exterior of, of the of the building next door. So that's that's what that's this is for. Yeah, that's the issue of the shared wall. Yep. Yeah. Can you go over that a little bit? Um, yeah. Like I said, it's a shared wall. I mean, it's, we want to bring it down safely so we're not messing up the building, the neighbor's building itself. So. Are they going to help with some of this cost of this shared? Well, what happens is we have asked uh, Lance uh, to begin to talk to them and see what things we can, what agreements we might make with them, what they would like to do with that. Uh, right there, uh, at this stage, again, it's our responsibility, but they talked about maybe what to do with some of that launch to work in that discussion. So the people that own it right now, then, after we tear it down, then, it's theirs, it's their property? Yeah, what happens is they still uh, have the property, and so what we do is we end up putting a tax lien on it, and it would go for three years, and, it'd be, and I'm sure they wouldn't pay tax on it. He wouldn't pay a tax on it, so it would be sold at the only option. Okay. So, this is actually just a plan yeah, this is just a plan to do that. And uh, that can answer to your, your good question, uh, Karen. What happens to it during one period of time? That's why uh, uh, the mayor that could be talked about doing something in earlier, uh, maybe somebody could buy that and go ahead and do something with it rather than sit for three years uh, as a vacant lot in the parking lot. They know that we've asked them. I've talked to the parking times about it. But now they're going to have to start making some decisions because things are starting to happen. And so, because if they don't want it, then we'll probably try to sell it. Yeah, yes, we could try to do that and see if the current owner would uh, be willing to sell it. That would be a good plan if we could do that, but we've not been able to talk about that. Okay. So, why don't we decide on Snyder? Yeah, I was thrown into this. This was uh, something before me. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> we do have a short list of um, I was the engineers list. for this type of thing. Um, Jim put it together a couple years ago. So for smaller projects like this, we do have. They've already been vetted. Yeah, vetted. So yes. I, I, I just want to make sure everybody else knew that. <laughs> Any other questions? And the, this is the cost. Of this guy. Twenty-four thousand is what's going to cost us to tear that building. No, that's no, just the plan. No, no, no. That's the engineering plan. Yep. And then if you look that's at That's what you asked, wasn't it? Yes. What you have, if you look at the next page back to the proposal, it's uh, $8,000 for the demolition plan, $12,000 to figure out how you fix that wall so that the shared wall does not come down and come then it's changed from a, from a shared wall to an outside wall, and then $4,000 there's a bid document so we can send it out to bid and have a company come in and do that. And then below it it says city will, will handle the advertising and bidding process. Well, when I said wall modifications, I thought that's what it was going to cost to take care of that shared wall. So, guess so, not. So, no. once, it, once it's all said and done, we get an 85 grand in this thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can have 85 grand in this thing. Oh, yes, we could. Yeah. We've had that with other buildings. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a resolution, it says ordinance, I, I will fix it. No, I started with an ordinance. A resolution authorizing the city manager of the city of Cameron to enter into a professional services agreement with PST Engineering for emergency work regarding moisture intrusion, mold and air quality, and building damage investigation at Cameron City Hall. I will entertain a motion to pass resolution 2024-22. Discussion. Okay, uh, Mayor and Council, this is a direct follow-on on the previous item we got because we have these problems with this building. We have uh, the bricks in the front, we have the foundation, we have the roof, we have mold, and so uh, we have to maintain our building the same as other people. And how has it gotten into this situation? Well, maybe it's just because in previous years uh, we haven't done what needed to be done. Now what happens is we've got those things happening right now. Uh, we've got to move some people out of their offices because uh, the roofs are, uh, are leaking in the offices. We have uh, the issue of, uh, of mold and health hazards in this building. And uh, so it is our responsibility to do something for this building the same way we would have done other people to come into their building. And it's uh, an expensive operation. And uh, we have uh, started out with the very beginning of it with uh, PST begin to work on this building and Michael, you can go ahead and tell them where we are now. Okay, so uh, we had the roofing company come out today and drill a couple of holes in the roof to check just to see what was damaged underneath the membrane. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have the air quality and mold guys come in and check the air quality and mold and, and uh, do some investigative work. Uh, there'll be another group of guys coming out on Friday to more work on the exterior of the building. I think they're going to cut into the whole or into the building in five different places to check for mold and you know any, any sort of damage they might find just to give us an overall health report of this building. So that's, that's kind of what this 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 is about. There's a, they're going to be installing some air scrubbers and I mean it's looking into all above all the ceiling tiles, looking for of course water intrusion, mold, anything like that that's going to cause health or safety concerns. In and uh, there was some discussion that uh, maybe they would not be able to start this until I think the 24th of the month. But Michael was able to get back with them. And uh, if we started it right now, they can start. And so they started actually today to do that. We've got liability issues and we've also got health issues. We're not sure where that's going to, going to lead, but we'll know here by the end of the week probably. And please tell me this 125,946 is just not the study. That's the study. No. Yeah. It costs a lot of money to find out stuff. Yes. Well, I'm in the wrong business. Their office only yeah. is $200 an hour. Well, I saw, I saw. And $400. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. But what they're going to do is this will be the testing as well. So we're going to find out what uh, is necessary in order to be done. And the, the, final, the final expense of this building will be very expensive. Uh, and are, have we checked in the insurance? Yes, we have. And uh, <laughs> and uh, there, uh, there's two steps to this. Uh, I've got that in front of me, and we have uh, the items that are excluded from our insurance. And I'll read three uh, sentences on that. One, normal wear and tear, deterioration, gradually developing conditions, erosion, inherent vice, or latent defect. Another one is damage caused directly or indirectly by the presence, growth, proliferation, spread, or any activity of mold, fungus, wet, or dry rot, bacteria, or virus. And the third one says continuous or repeated seepage, leakage, or flow of water that occurs over a period of over 14 days or more. Those things are all excluded from the, uh, from the uh, uh, insurance. But now we did have a couple of good questions, and I will go back and follow up on that because maybe there was some damage, some hail damage or something early on that maybe called caused it. And we'll go back and investigate and see if there's any possibility of getting more insurance on that. And, and, and as far as the building goes, you know, our guys who did uh, their study, did they? look at the blueprints when 
Copeland built this and did the additions to see if there were, was any error or they cut corners or anything? Yes, we did that. And uh, Patrick, uh, if you could answer, we went back to see if there's anything we need to go back to build it. What, what did you find in that? Uh, we found that one of the contracts that would typically contain provisions that would protect the city in this instance, and do, when the building was constructed, those were excluded from that um, standard form contract. And uh, what about the statute of limitations on the suit? There is also the statute of limitations at issue where this building was constructed over 20 years ago, and the statute of limitations for suit on contracts is 10 years. And even if they do some, did something wrong, the statute of limitations well, never we, kicks we should, in? There is the argument that we should have discovered it due to the fact that we were inspecting the construction. That's because um, nobody's been taking it's our not punch list. The city, the city council does not care about this building. That has never been a part of their vision. They just used it and just let it deteriorate. All of us, all the city councils have. I think it was what she told me, 2011. They knew that there was a They just did not do their due diligence. And that's just one thing I can say. Whoever out there in the future that comes on city council, please do your due diligence because we are no different than any other citizen. We need to take care of our buildings because this is what happens. I remember, remember years ago, have you had a problem with mold in the building? Mm -hmm. But I don't know the reason and all that mess. But yeah, this is just neglect negligence. And sadly to say, we are the ones that are going to be, you are the ones that are out to pay for this. So we have Now, in terms of paying for it, we do have about uh, three quarters of a million dollars still left in our funds. And so there's a possibility that we can start out with this payment immediately with, with using our funds. So it's not out of budgetary issue for us right now. Right, right. We didn't really want all those funds to go to City Hall. That's why we had to spend them, because we knew that was looming in the background. So it looks like it might chew it all up. Thank God for that. All right, any other questions? Kind of a hard to kill as well, isn't it? And uh, what we do is 50% of this is a initial retainer. Yeah, we have to pay the rest of it. Yeah, we don't have that. All right. No, but we learned stuff here. I guess. <laughs> They're professionals, remember that. Uh -huh. All right. All those in favor of passing resolution 2024-22, say aye. 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 All opposed? Five in favor, zero opposed. That takes us to our second public participation. Anybody who would like to talk to us, please come up to the podium, write your name and number, please speak into the uh, microphone, and you have five minutes. All right. That moves us on to miscellaneous comments from the staff. Steve. I have nothing more. Thank you, Mayor. Michael. I have nothing. Thank you. I have nothing Lance. at this time. Lance, before we do that, maybe you might have some comments on what's coming up on the 4th of July. Oh, yes, good like I said. Yeah, I'll update everybody on that. So, Steve and I went and met with, um, we met with Gina as well as the old school group yesterday today at 11.15. So we're moving forward with the fireworks program and we're getting everything together. We're also making sure that all of our Permits are in place, our insurances are there as well as working with Mike because he was nice enough to be there with us and he's helping us out with that with the fire department. And so we are making headway to get that all done as quick as possible, well before the 4th of July. So, mm -hmm. Friends for Firework I wrote the check today, the first half of the fire. And so that way they're, they're split up because there's two different groups that are running. Okay. So, this is one of those odd years because the 4th of July occurred on uh, on Thursday. So we have fireworks that night. So those will be over about 11 o'clock or so. Then we clean up after that. And then the next day is the regular business day. Don't you just love it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so between working on that and then and going through files and text, well, learning what I need to learn on the way, the processes of Cameron, 
So it's been nice to have me with doing that, so, as well as the rest of the staff. Um, so I'm trying to catch up and learn as much as possible so I can move forward, as well as Mike helping me out with the planning and zoning. And so, I'm learning as we go. And if you have any questions or comments, I've got my cards over here that I'll give out because they're in now. And I can give you all my cards so you guys can have them for your convenience of calling me with any questions. So, I'm here to try to move things forward and help everyone in every way I can. So, thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just got one thing, a uh, large trash pickup is going to be June 29th, that's a Saturday, across from the PD again. Who's going to be doing it? I mean, who's, I mean last year, was Tim, Tim's been doing it for the last few years. Who's, who, what city staff is going to be doing that this year? Um, I'll probably have one that the uh, street department guys run the backhoe to load the, the heavier stuff into the... I'm yeah, but the, it takes two people to check everybody's stuff. I'm one of them. Yeah. I would always do that. I can, Okay, well, I'll be there. That's my thing, get rid of trash. And where's it at again? <laughs> it's like in the empty lot across from the PD. Oh, PD. Now, how about the FD, too? <laughs> We're fired, yeah, fire department. Public safety building. It's in the parking lot, yeah. <laughs> you shouldn't tell the scrappers. So, uh, so how are people going to find out? Was it in there June? There two city council city. I don't know what my yeah, it's on the calendar. Okay, perfect. Yeah, pay your bill. Yeah. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Todd. Nothing, Mary. Thank you. Okay. Please. Carmen. Councilor. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, the Memorial Day flowers of the cemeteries need to be picked up by this Friday the 7th. Um, the city is working, the city staff is working with um, Ali Vet Clinic to have a pet vaccination clinic here at City Hall tomorrow from Friday the 7th. And I love the information for that in front of you guys. Um, we are currently taking applications for communication officers, dispatchers at the police department. A facility maintenance person and a customer service clerk. Um, we do have a full staff right at the moment, but when the customer service clerk she's put in her two weeks notice when she's gone, um, until we get somebody in there, we may have some days where we have to close the lobby for lunch or for half a day or something just so that we have plenty of people. On a normal day would be fine, but we do have people who have planned uh, vacations and whatnot. So if we run short, we might have to do some juggling. Hey, I need help with my office. What you guys coming? I wish I could shut down if we got short staff. All right, Karen. Sorry, I told you to uh, silence your phone. Oh no, I'm. Thank you very much. I don't know why I didn't do that. It just lets you know I'm busy all the time. That's rude. No, Sorry. No, no. I said. That's it. John? John. And I'm um, deciding on whether I can call you something. Okay. Um, I just uh, happened to notice that uh, Bill Jensen is uh, resigned. Retired. From the park board after 32 years, and I just wanted to, to give a shout out to him. I believe he worked way back when my mom was on there, which was long. I think he was on there with her. And 32 years of service is a long time. Absolutely. Yeah. Just uh, wanted to thank him for, for those years of dedication. Yeah. Um, and then there was one other quick thing. And Steve and I talked about this a little bit in our meeting. Uh, I understand that there's been some, uh, we haven't been doing the puppies on roll uh, that, we had, that we used to do. And I'm just thinking of different ways that we can get some of those uh, dogs and cats adopted and get them out with the uh, alligator. And I'm just thinking maybe we could do some things like Pooch pictures, kitty can, and something like that. They had to have cat and just take some pictures, get them out there on the city website. I think they are on that website. I think they're on the 
Yes, they're all Pathfinder, I believe. Yeah, they're all Pathfinder. Okay. But we need to do it because the people are being what Pathfinder is. You just say get it out there, let people Well, actually, if you Google pets, adopt a pet from camera, I believe that's oh, like, the site that comes out. So I, I've oh. read it to it before. Okay. Well, I just, I just know that from a standpoint, that it's going to be better for them to have families that are wanting them. Because um, I'm seeing it all the time. I'm not the only one that doesn't know, because people are always asking. So, and I know it's also the lowest cost. Uh, yeah, you know, that's that way. So, anyway, just an idea. I'd like to put it out there and see if we can do something. Maybe in the matter of what's in it, we'll be talking about that. Gina. Yes, I was meeting with Rebecca from middle school the last. I was there when we had the Main Street, and so also we're trying to build a coalition so that we have lots and lots of participants in the 4th of July community, and that everybody gets involved, and everybody has the greatest 4th of July ever. And if somebody wants to sponsor that baby show, they need to call me. Does the farmers make that do that? Well, they have it for a few years. Phone calls. If you get a phone call from me, pick it up. Yeah. We have other things that. Have you, like have, you, have you contacted the other banks? Because farmers are still maybe another bank to do it. Well, I think we have a lead on the baby show. Well, and we yeah. have sororities used to do it too. Right. We have we a sorority. Huh? Do we still have a sorority? Well, there are. There used to be six, but when we dropped out, there's five. Yeah. Well, and one thing. Okay. Cat out of the bag. I we were going to ask Kathy to do a adopt a pet thing, one of the one of the July celebration things. So, so hopefully we'll get some of those little, little four lady friends out there at that time. All right. Thank you. I don't really have anything to say except for be sure and make sure you bring your trash on the 29th, 8 o'clock to noon. Yes. Okay. Um, we love what our roads look like. I love them pulling into town and it looks really nice. It looks like we're a real nice town. So um, that's all I have. So we will, um, I will ask for a motion to adjourn into a second. We have a second, correct? Yeah. yeah. So into a second. Karen Hamlin. Yes. John Biker. Yes. Becky Curtis. Yes. Gina Reed Hitler. Yes. John Brenner. Yes. Thanks, guys.